Arcane Odyssey is an MMORPG adventure game with some of the best visuals and intriguing lore I have ever seen. It's been nearly two months since the game's initial release, and now that everyone's gotten a good glimpse for what is to come in the future, I thought it'd be a good idea to do a quick recap over the Bronze Sea storyline so that our understanding over the current story is solidified in preparation for the Nimbus Sea storyline that is to come hopefully sometime over summer. The story begins with the player waking up on a relatively small and tropical island. He walks around and finds someone called Morden, and the two of them seem to have a history together. However, the player has no recollection or memories of whatever happened previously for some reason, while Morden still does. The player decides to head to Red Wake, which is a port town just east from their current location, while Morden decides to stay in the island for a while to think things through. Once the player arrives, he's confronted by local bandits in which he took care of quite quickly, and after doing some community service for money and fighting the first introductory boss called Shura, he decides to head to Frostmel Island, which is a massive iceberg with its own town on top due to his curiosity after hearing rumours of the island being cursed. Upon arrival, he talks to the mayor of Frostmel Island, where the mayor then explained to the player that the island appears to be melting for some unknown reason, and that the vast majority of the population believe the island to be cursed as the reason why. After some deep investigation, the player eventually finds out the source of the problem, and that is a lost magic user called Iris who's able to command immensely hot and powerful magic called flare magic. After an intense battle with Iris, the player comes out victorious and Iris flees to the Stepstones which is a massive mountain that stretches far into the clouds in the sky and is the gateway to Cirrus Island, a sky island with its own town that is able to stay airborne due to the clouds containing unique magic properties. The player decides to chase after her and after reaching the bottom of the Stepstones, he meets a man called Ren who explains that he's looking for someone, but the conversation ends here as he doesn't really trust the player very well yet. After climbing the Stepstones and meeting Iris again there, she explains that the reason why she was melting the island was to get revenge because her father was kidnapped and she strongly believed Ravenna was responsible for it, which is the kingdom Frostmel Island is under jurisdiction of. Iris then explains that apparently there were sightings of hooded figures dragging a bleeding man with a sword pierced through his chest away here on Cyrus Island, and Iris suspects that man may actually be her father and intends to do some investigation. After the player helps her and does some of his own investigation, he meets a man called Naviro who explains that some of the hooded figures were still around here on the Sky Islands. After the player hunts them down and fights them, he finds out that they are a part of the Order of Aesir, which is a secret organisation that has the goal of advancing magic by any means possible, even if it means doing incredibly cruel and unethical things. They also have the goal of acquiring sea curses, which are incredibly strong powers that people can obtain that is on a whole new level of destruction as compared to regular magic. He then fights a powerful, newly recruited agent of the Order called Lord Elias, and after an incredibly difficult battle with a lot of annoying attacks, he eventually manages to defeat Lord Elias. Now here is where the player can make a story choice that will eventually affect the path that it goes down in the newer seas eventually planned for the future. You can either decide to kill or spare Lord Elias. If you decide to spare him, you will then proceed to spare all of the later bosses you fight in the story except from a few, and if you decide to kill him, however, you will kill every other boss you fight technically except from one. But regardless of which option you choose, the story pretty much doesn't change at all for the Bronze Sea storyline. After he goes back and explains what happened to Iris, she suggests he goes to Sailor's Lodge, a place where lots of information is shared to hopefully find more clues to what is going on. After reaching Sailor's Lodge and talking to a few customers of the pub there, he finds Morden again here for the first time since they woke up together on Dawn Island. The player explains to Morden what has happened to him so far, and Morden says that he saw hooded figures entering Fort Talos, which is essentially one of Ravenna's military bases. After talking to a few more customers, he then finds an ex-Ravenna soldier who is feeling a little devious and told the player that there was a secret underground tunnel entrance to Fort Talos. The player tells Morden this and he's sceptical at first but he decides to go with the player to infiltrate Fort Talos in order to attempt to find more clues. After entering Fort Talos, sneaking around, listening to meetings and causing chaos and basically doing a hitman and weak soldiers to get information from them, Morden leaves early urgently for some reason and after finding Beringer in an incapacitated state, Beringer explains that he was forced to drink a particular potion that turns him into a mindless zombie that will answer all questions truthfully. Now in this part of the story a lot of things start to make sense and all the pieces start to fall in place. 
The kingdom is in cahoots with the Order of Aesir for some reason because the hooded figure is kidnapped and dragged Beringer to Fort Talos. As it turns out, Beringer is also a curse user. He holds the Cloud Curse, which is strong, but the reason for kidnapping him was something else. Beringer knew the location of the Death Curse, which is one of the strongest curses in existence. And one of Ravenna's generals, General Argos, has a sword called Devourer and is able to steal curses from curse users after piercing them with it. He had already been stabbed by this sword way back earlier, back in Stepstone, so he doesn't have very long to live. And just earlier, Morden had already met Beringer, and Beringer told him where the Death Curse is, as he'd much rather have Morden, a friend of the player, have the curse rather than the Order of Aesir. And that's actually why Morden had to go urgently, as he is currently in a race to get Death Curse against the Order of Aesir, because they also now know where it is too, and there'll be a way to get it. At this point in the story, Ren appears again, which Beringer personally knows, and the player leaves while Beringer and Ren have their last conversation. The player discovers General Argos sitting in a meeting room with others in the opposite room to Beringer, and while listening in on them, it turns out that General Argos had just gotten note that Lord Elias was killed, and this this is what they would have said if you killed Lord Elias, but if you spared him, he would have went back to Ravenna anyways and snitched. It doesn't change any of the story, but only some dialogue, but still, he's a little bitch for snitching. Like, can you imagine? General Orgos is so unbelievably strong, he detects the player listening in on him through a wall and blasts the wall wide open, sending the player flying. After a long and gruelling battle, the force produced by the battle eventually causes the ceiling of the room to cave in, crushing General Argos to death, and this is where he met his demise. The player promptly escapes the collapsing fort and heads to Rubica, one of the cities of Ravenna where he meets Prince Ravon, the current King Calvus of Ravenna's younger brother giving a speech that they were awaiting the return of King Calvus with a new mayor of the town called Tilly. However, word just got in that Mayor Tilly was kidnapped by pirates and they were actually currently searching for them. The player then heads to the capital to gather more information on the kidnapping of Mayor Tilly, and after talking to some very strong and high-ranking members of the Ravenna's army, he joins into the search and rescue team and later finds Mayor Tilly being held hostage by the pirates in Tiberia, and they demand ransom for the release of Mayor Tilly. The pirates then explain to the player how Ravenna is incredibly corrupt and how there was something deeper and darker going on within the Ravenna government. This was when word just got into the Ravenna's forces stationed in the city that General Orgos was killed and Fort Talos was completely crushed, and the suspects were two people, one of which they recognised was the player. The pirates told the player to go to the Shining Plains as it was a natural area in which he could hide from the army attempting to arrest the player. However, arriving there, the player is ambushed by an incredibly strong foe called Lady Karina, who turns out to be Lord Elias's sister. She attacks the player in a rage to get revenge on the player for killing her brother, and after a very bombastic battle, the player comes out on top and questions her on what's going on with the Order of Aesir. She told him to go to Ravenna Castello, the king's castle, to find the Order's High Lord, and he went in his way. However, this was where the player's plot armour started to crack, as while he was on his way to the capital, he was violently ambushed by a homelander from the sky, who is a glass curse user and instantly knocks the main character clean out. His name is General Julian, by the way, and he's one of the strongest generals in the Ravenna military. The player wakes up in the Eternal Mines, where the guards explain that he will be here for the rest of his life to do hard manual labour and mine resources until the day he dies. After grabbing a pickaxe and finding a spot to mine, he meets an elderly gentleman who tells him all sorts of very interesting plot points, however most of them aren't important for now, but they probably most certainly will be for the future story much later down the line. After a month of conversation with this gentleman and one other person who knew critical information about the Order but was sent down here as a result, the player pieces together all the missing parts of the puzzle and finds out that the High Lord of the Order was King Calvus of Ravenna himself. A day later, Morden returning triumphantly with the Death Curse and Iris as well as Naviro breaks into the Eternal Minds to free the player. Once they get out of the mines, they head to where King Calvus is, and on the way, Homelander fights Morden with his newly equipped Death Curse. Iris gets a little bit distracted fighting the soldiers and proceeds to burn them all to death, and Naviro and the player head into King Calvus's throne room where they were instantly locked in battle with King Calvus. King Calvus was enraged as he heard rumours of the Death Curse, and after ordering General Orgos to kill Beringer, revealing the location of the Death Curse, he sent the order to retrieve it. However, it was too late by then as Morden had already gotten there and took it for himself. It was the player's hardest battle yet, as Calvus is able to use a very unique lost magic called Ether Magic, which basically just made King Calvus stupidly strong. However, plot armour wins again and King Calvus is defeated. 
It is at this point in time that it was revealed that Nevero was actually the lost prince of a lost kingdom called Winterville. Nevero explained that the previous king of Ravenna, King Octavius Caesar, which is King Calvus' dad, were in a war with a kingdom called Winterville, and King Octavius Caesar was so stupidly and mind-blowingly strong he went to Winterville himself and with one gigantic blast fueled with almost limitless amount of energy, he instantly vaporised the entire kingdom and the surrounding island, simultaneously erasing every single organism on the island. The attack was so strong that the magical energy is actually still vaguely present on the island, so when you go there you actually get insanity. Anyways, Nevero was in hiding all along because if Ravenna found out of his identity then he would have been killed as King Octavius Caesar wanted no eyewitnesses left to tell the tale. And now that he is back, standing over King Calvus' dying being, he's feeling pretty good about himself. The reason why King Calvus was in cahoots with the Order of Aesir was because at a young age his father died and he became the King of Ravenna when he was a child. He wanted to get stronger by any means necessary to be able to become a good king and this was when the Order of Aesir offered to take him in to teach him Aether magic in exchange for Ravenna's cooperation with the Order of Aesir's goals. Anyways, back to where we were. The Vero Iris Modern and the player meet up and escape the island. They were being chased by the entire Ravenna fleet as by now they've found out that their king was just murdered by these people. The player flees south of Ravenna to Windrow Island, which is an almost abandoned island where they manage to lose the Ravenna fleet. They set up camp here trying to think about what they're going to do now. This was when they were attacked by the Windrow Wolves, a bandit group that lives on the island. After fending off the bandits, the player hears a loud noise from the mountain above. He decides to go and investigate. Here he meets Ren again, and this is where he found out that Ren's name was not Ren, but was actually Warren. Warren asks the player if he's had his awakening yet, and once he found out that he didn't, Warren gave the player some tips on how to awaken, such as meditation and other things. After the player leaves the island temporarily to go around meditating to find himself to be able to awaken, he hears a strange voice calling out to him to come to Mount Orthus where he will find his true purpose or something like that. After heading to Mount Orthus and discovering a secret temple there, he finds out that the entity that called out his name was actually the god of the seas, the strongest human to have ever lived, the god Poseidon. His energy is very scattered and he doesn't have much time left before he becomes dormant again for potentially eons. But due to the player's incredibly strong will and interesting background, he gives the player the rest of his energy, causing his first awakening. After returning to Windrow Island with the rest of the gang, they explain that now King Calvus is dead, the ruler of Ravenna, there will be a war between two kingdoms in the Nimbus Sea, the Kerax Kingdom and the Samaria Province. As Ravenna previously was preventing any of this happening as it was too dangerous for them to make any sort of moves due to the strength of Ravenna. But now that King Calvus is dead, this gives them the perfect opportunity for a military campaign. And so, they decide to set out to the Nimbus Sea to resolve the problems while also trying to get stronger along the way. So this is basically where the story ends. This video took a while to make, so I'm going to end it here, but hopefully you found this recap helpful. And yes, this is literally just the very brief skimmed over summary of the current story. There are so many plot points, details and dialogue that I'd love to cover all in one video, but a video like that would literally take hours to do it justice. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, why not consider subscribing for more epic content like this in the future? Leave a comment letting me know what you think. Maybe hit the like button to show you like this kind of stuff. And yeah, I'll see you later.